So how has your week been? Well, my week has been very full. We just yeah. got yeah, we just got back from Mexico, so yeah, how yeah. was it? It was fun. It was relaxing. Yeah, I had a six-hour spa day. I know it's the first time ever I've been able to like lay down. They have the hydrotherapy there as well. So you get oh, in the okay. sauna, you go get in the hot tub and you get in the really, really cold tub. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. Right. yes, yeah. those, so we pick our resorts based on having one of those. Oh, that's right. Yeah. <laughs> Cause every time we go to the gym, we go to that after, right, right afterwards. Cause okay, it, so you're still working out. Really. Yeah. So that was fun. We were there and then came back and you have to recover for a couple of days and, but you know, life doesn't slow down here. So when we come back, it's just like Got being thrown out. right back into <laughs> it. Yeah, yeah. So, really no, it's volleyball games. Kids want sleepovers yeah. constantly. And yeah, I was just talking about they're having a sleepover. Everyone wants to have a sleepover. Okay. And the ones that if I counted, we'd have 12 people at the house. Oh. What's nice about it is that many kids, they totally entertain themselves. They're not like, what are we doing today, you know? Right. So they, we don't see them for a couple of hours. They'll be playing hide and seek and right. outside. And well, too, they're at that age where they kind of like, they're still playing with toys and stuff. So yeah. they just kind of go off and do their own yeah. thing. Yeah. And the babies are totally entertained. Yeah. Like they're always doing stuff. The babies just hang out with them because it's entertaining <laughs> watching, you know. How are the kids' sports going? Really good. Um, I, I'd like to get them some coaching, you know. Mm -hmm. There's uh, a couple clubs around here for volleyball, but our thing is just schedule. Even Kaylee's like, Mom, if we do that, there's just no way we're going to be able to make it to everything, you know? <laughs> At least they're aware of it. Yeah. Not, like, oblivious, yeah. you know? And then Allie wants to do everything. She's like, I'm doing volleyball. Yeah. I'm doing basketball. I'm doing archery. I want to do band. She um, wants to be swim team. Yeah. So, we want to get into this hacking video yeah. I don't know what, what we want to call it what are we gonna call it today shifting market hacks okay. so we're in a shifting market I thought that I might bring you guys um, some things to think about when you're discovering what to do with your real estate business as this market shifts and I will tell you number one don't panic uh, we're actually going into a normal market if you are a realtor that has gotten involved in real estate over let's just say the last four years, we were in a good market. It got better, it got better, it got better. And then it got really, really good uh, as far as units sold and volume sold. And now we're just leveling back out. We're getting into a normal market where there are listing agents and there are buyer's agents and one side. So if you're a buyer's agent, you're working for the buyer. If you're a seller's agent, you're working for the seller. Whereas the last couple of years, we kind of all turned into seller's agents because we haven't had a lot of inventory. And when that happens, you get prices go up, sellers get what they want, and you're just trying to make an offer that is acceptable. I mean, we've talked to people that have put nine, 10, 11, 12 offers in and not had them accepted. And so realtors were learning how to package up offers that could be, uh, that could compete with the other 50 offers in some cases. And so essentially these agents are basically working for the seller um, or in the better benefit of. And now we're getting into a market where if you're a buyer's agent, you're talking to them about putting together an offer that works for them because likely they're not gonna be in competition like they were uh, over the last couple of years. Hi, if we have not met yet, I'm Heather Blatz, real estate broker, coach, and investor. I've had the pleasure of coaching hundreds of real estate agents as they venture into their new business and invest in real estate. I started this channel to help you succeed in your real estate business and learn about investing all the money you're making in real estate. So real quick, hit that subscribe button to be notified when I post a new video. So there's two things you'll wanna focus on. One, finding buyers, because maybe they're not calling you as fast anymore. And two, getting them to put offers in. So what I'm seeing right now and hearing right now from buyer's agents is that they're not getting calls if they paid for leads or if they had friends calling them, it was just nonstop. Hey, I wanna put an offer on this house. And now they're not even, their phone's not ringing. So now you've got to shift and start talking about real estate and start finding leads. 
And then the second thing is, if you are showing properties, a lot of agents are having a hard time getting their buyers to write offers. Welcome to the real world. This is exactly what real real estate is. This is when studying how to be a great real estate agent and consultant is going to separate the best from the rest. Okay, so those are two things. We're just gonna talk about those two things. The number one thing you'll have to do first is shift your mindset. You have to believe that this is a great time to buy real estate still. You have to believe that just because the interest rates have gone up, that it's still a great time and a great investment to buy real estate. If you don't believe that, how do you expect your buyers to believe that or your sphere or whoever you're talking to about real estate? Now, it really is a great time to buy real estate. In my area, you can still buy something for less than you can rent it, number one. Number two, you're going to be paying for where you live anyway, right? So if you're paying your own self, then your house mortgage is going to be going down and essentially you're putting money in a savings bank. Three, over time, you're going to create equity in almost any house that you buy. If you look at the trends over 10, 15, 20 years, people still did very well when they bought in a market that they thought was super high when they sold later on in life. And last but not least, think about this. When we were in a market where we were competing with, let's just say even 10 offers, and buyers couldn't put in their offers that they want a closing cost. So seven, $8,000, in some cases to 10, $15,000, they would have to bring to the table. They have to find this cash and bring it to the table. Or they were one of the buyers that couldn't even compete. So they're still sitting out there without a house. Now you're in a market where you're not competing with multiple offers. So your buyers probably can get their closing costs paid. They may even be able to work in other things like refrigerators or repairs or adding fences. It's time to get creative. On top of that, we are leaving a market where people were paying 20 to $30,000 over asking, over appraised value, and that's just not happening anymore. I don't think how I want to end that one. Is it a good or bad thing? Um, I mean, it's a good thing for people. So affordability. Okay. So really, regardless of interest rates, affordability has increased. So when you're studying the positives of buying homes in today's market, that will radiate in your conversations. And it's exactly the conversations you need to be having with your sphere and maybe with some of the past buyers that got discouraged from the crazy market that we were in. Now on to getting your buyers to actually make offers. If you are working with a buyer that had experience over the last couple years, you've got to be a little sensitive to that. It's frustrating. I mean, real estate is not easy. And when you decide to buy a house, sometimes it can be overwhelming. And so imagine being that person that continue to get your hopes up and then be let down and then hopes up and then be let down. It, they're going to need to hear from their expert that now is the time to jump in. We've got people that have put their house on the market just a little bit too late, expecting to sell in under two weeks. So once we started hitting those 15 to 30 day marks, days on market, these sellers are very anxious to get their house sold. So encouraging your buyers that that is the market that we're in and now is the time to go ahead, write the offer, ask for the closing costs, ask for a couple other things that would make this house absolutely amazing for them and go from there. Because at this point, I can imagine that if you started doing that, you'd probably have 80% of your offers accepted or minorly countered. And if you wait another six months, we might not be able to take advantage of this seller shift. So if we summarize what we've talked about today, it's all about your mindset, your perception of the shift that we're going into and whether it's a positive thing or a negative thing. And I believe it is one of the best times to buy and to sell real estate right now. I hope today's message helped you. And if you have any question, my contact information is in the description below. Don't forget to like and share this video and check out my channel for more videos just like this. See you next time. Get them toes, Maddie. <laughs>